This is one of those moments. You gotta ask yourself, what do I want? The world ain't built for guys like us. You ain't seen what I can do. This, this is one of those moments. You gotta ask yourself, what kind of life do I want? The world ain't built for guys like us. That's why we gotta take whatever we decide is ours. It's Carmine Falco's right hand. Try to push me out. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey. You ain't seen what I can do. But if you step out of line, even once, I'll gut you like a goddamn fish. Can you imagine? The people say in my name of the streets after you're gone. Have it mean something? <laughs> the new king better got them. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. HBO and Max just dropped a bunch of new trailers in the last week because of Brazil Comic Con, CCXP, and we got some more footage of that Batman series that's coming to HBO based on Colin Farrell's Penguin from the events of Matt Reeves and Robert Pattinson's Batman movies. We learned about some of the plots, some of the big Batman villains, other major characters that will show up during the episodes, and how it sets up the Batman 2 movie, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I know there's a bit of a question about how all these are going to work because James Gunn just rebooted the DCU and they have all that stuff that's going to be connected and then you have all the Elseworlds stuff. Like this is the giant chart of all the upcoming movies and TV series and where it fits like Elseworlds versus DCU versus all the other stuff. There's a lot of stuff they announce, only a couple things coming during 2024, very few DC series. Most of the big DC stuff won't be till like 2025 and beyond. They convert all the Penguin episodes will start releasing late 2024, which typically means around the fall, unless they say something different in the next couple of months. Matt Reeves already revealed that episode one is meant to begin about a week after the ending of the Batman movie with the city still mostly underwater from the Riddler's attack. Like here at the end of the movie, you saw him standing in Falcone's office looking out over the wreckage of the city, like all this damage. That's basically where the series begins. The Riddler just got thrown in Arkham Asylum. The Joker's there with him. There's all that stuff going on in the background too. They're not meant to be like really huge characters during the Penguin, but all that stuff is happening during the events of the episodes. And they basically begin the series with the Penguin trying to seize Carmine Falcone's criminal empire as his own before the other New York City mob bosses, surviving members of Falcone's own family, try to take it first. Power abhors a vacuum in Gotham City, and Falcone was meant to be like the top mob boss at the time of his fall during the movie. So it's basically a mad dash for power right from the start. Matt Reeves called it Penguin's Scarface moment, his rise to power as a crime boss in his own right. Up to this point, he's just been one of Carmine Falcone's lieutenants, one of his underbosses. I came to Penguin and the idea of Batman when Burgess Meredith played Penguin and Adam West played Batman. To me, his character is kind of like Scarface. He's totally underestimated and he knows he can be more. I say hello to my little friend! That's why there's all that dialogue in the trailer from the Penguin talking about seizing his moment, deciding what kind of person he wants to be. The way that Matt Reeves is pitching it, it sounds like one of the chief antagonists, if not the chief antagonist, will be the other major crime boss in New York City, Sal Maroney. He'll be played by Clancy Brown. If you remember, Maroney was framed by Falcone for the drops, the Gotham City renewal plot, before the events of the first movie began, and he's been in prison for a while for that. So he's seeking revenge against the former Falcone crime family, even though Falcone's dead, like he still wants his revenge, and seeking to reclaim his lost territory and power that Falcone absorbed after he went into prison. During the events of the first movie, they also canonized that Sal Maroney was actually the person responsible for the creation of that drops drug that had become an epidemic in the city during the events of the first movie. There were a bunch of references to the drops, but they never really resolved that plot, probably because Maroney is a huge character during the Penguin episodes. Matt Reeves probably just always intended on paying that off during the series. 
If you didn't catch it during the first movie too, they also explained Maroney had a lot of history with Thomas Wayne. He was the one that was responsible for hiring Thomas Elliot, the reporter, to dig up dirt on Martha Wayne being in the Arkham State Mental Hospital when he was running for mayor of Gotham City. That set out that whole hush plot, like big hush easter egg from the Batman comics. Carmine Falcone having the reporter killed, then using that event to blackmail Thomas Wayne, eventually allowing the mob bosses of Gotham to take over the Gotham City Renewal Fund, using it to launder their money, setting up everything that's going on in present day. Originally, Maroney hired the reporter, Thomas Elliot, hoping to gain some traction, some leverage against Thomas Wayne, knowing that he might become mayor. Like, oh, if he becomes mayor and I have some dirt on him, I can use it to blackmail him to do whatever I want. Even though his plans eventually failed, he joined Falcone, the other mob bosses, when they took over the Gotham City Renewal Fund and was taking an equal share of the money from that. Part of the idea, though, is that he started to become more powerful, especially when he created the drops, and Falcone wanted to basically get rid of him by having him thrown in prison, basically informing on him to Pete Savage, the police commissioner at the time, and Gil Colson, the corrupt district attorney, to have him thrown in prison. Then he basically took over Maroney's former territory in the city. So part of the idea you have to remember is that Maroney probably wound up getting released from prison after Gil Colson and Pete Savage's corruption was discovered. It would have basically voided any arrests and major convictions that they made. So a bunch of criminals would be getting released from prison, not just Maroney. Look at Clancy Brown. Like, is it not time to pay the piper? He is going to wreck a bunch of people during the series. So that's one of the major threats that Penguin has to deal with during the series. There's also everything that's going on with Robert Pattinson's Batman. Remember, he actually worked with Penguin. Like Penguin actually helped him, so he kind of owes him a solid. We'll probably get at least a minor cameo as Bruce Wayne and or Batman. Just to explain what he's doing in these weeks after the end of the first movie before the events of the Batman 2 pick up. There are a couple new characters that they show in the footage here, like Michael Kelly, most of you will recognize from somewhere. He's in a bunch of big stuff. He's playing John Vitti, one of Falcone's other former underbosses, just like the Penguin, who's also probably vying with the Penguin to try and take over that former empire. One of the other biggest characters is going to be Falcone's daughter, Sophia, played by Kristen Milioti. She's actually supposed to be Penguin's main love interest during the series. So I'm expecting kind of a twist with her character. Like they set her up as like a traditional love interest who probably grew up with everybody thinking that she didn't want to have anything to do with Falcone's crime family or that side of his life. But early prediction, they'll reveal that she's actually super smart and there's a bit of play back and forth between her and Penguin. Like she's not just going to roll over and let him completely take over her father's empire. She might try to take over herself. That's usually the kind of twist you see with characters like that. Like, oh, she's not a damsel in distress. She's actually a pretty big badass. Falcone's son Alberto and his widow are also part of the series, also probably vying for control of the family too. Like you see Penguin getting hauled in by a couple of men here to talk to this person. This might be Falcone's widow trying to rake him over to the coals about what happened to Falcone. The kid in the trailer that's helping the penguin load the body into the back of the car, very classic mob story. Sopranos meets the Batman. He's supposed to be a random teenager that penguin befriends, like he finds him on the streets, befriends him, and then turns him into his driver. But generally, most of the trailer footage that we've seen so far is just giving us vibes for the series. Like, we don't see a ton of the actual story. We'll probably get a trailer in the next couple of months with more actual footage from the series. I've already done a couple videos about the Batman 2 movies, so I'll link them down in the description below. We learned about some of the characters, some of the plot that Matt Reeves has talked about. Most of those are rumors right now, like there's rumors that Robin is actually going to show up at some point during the series. Timothy Chalamet even talked about becoming a version of Robin, even though I think he's a little too old relative to Robert Pattinson's age during the events of the Batman 2. Like, he's still in his 20s. Any version of Dick Grayson Robin would have to be like way, way younger than Timothy Chalamet. When they started releasing footage of the first movie, a lot of people actually thought that it was this kid just because of the way that Robert Pattinson's Batman was staring at him at the funeral here. But remember, that was meant to be the mayor's son, so it wasn't a version of Dick Grayson. It was just meant to be a scene where he sees this little kid and sees himself in the kid. Like, oh, this same kind of thing happened to me when I was a little kid and my parents were killed in Crime Alley. The only other thing we know that Matt Reeves is working on with the Batman universe is that Arkham show, and I think that that's where they'll pick up a lot of the Riddler, the Joker storyline, and a lot of other Batman rogues gallery of villains. They didn't say when that's going to release. What they might do, though, is if they don't do the Penguin Season 2, is they'll try to release that Arkham show like the year after the Batman 2 comes out. So they might do it like the Marvel Disney Plus series where there aren't a lot of season twos or they could always swerve on that because it sounds like Marvel's also swerving on that and now doing things more like regular TV series where they do get multiple seasons. 
So instead of doing a bunch of different Batman TV series, they could just wind up doing season two, season three of the Penguin and just doing all those other spinoff plots on the Penguin series. James Gunn also confirmed that he is doing Peacemaker season two, but that's actually going to be set inside his DCU, like all the connected stuff, as opposed to the Batman stuff, which is often its own little universe. Peacemaker won't come back till after he releases Superman Legacy in 2025, which is also the same year that the Batman 2 is coming out. So it's going to be a big year for DC in 2025. My only hope for the Peacemaker series right now is that they actually use him as sort of like the psycho pirate of the DC universe, like James Gunn's new DCU. And he's like the only character who remembers the DCEU in the previous version of the Justice League, like everything that came before. So because his whole thing is he's this crazy conspiracy nut, always yelling about crazy conspiracy theories, is that during the events of the series, he goes on and on about this big reboot, but nobody believes him because he does sound so crazy all the time. Like he winds up seeing some footage of Superman and the new version of Batman eventually and is like, wait a minute, that's not Batman, that's not Superman, what happened to them? How come you guys don't realize things have changed, the universe has been rebooted, how come nobody's talking about it? There's a bunch of stuff coming up, there are a couple other big trailers that released recently, so I'll try to do videos for everything, but if you have any questions about what's going on in the Batman universe with those movies or the other DC movies, just write them in the comments below. We do have Aquaman 2 coming up, but that's sort of like the very last DCEU movie, so that's not connected to any of the Batman stuff. I'll do my regular post credit scene videos, Easter egg videos for the Aquaman movie when it does wind up coming out. Everyone click here for that brand new Deadpool 3 teaser and click here for my brand new House of the Dragon season 2 trailer video and easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching, everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.